So I'm not married, mm-hmm. right? I have beautiful children. How many? Eight. I, was, I thought I, I didn't do my research. I thought it was four, but eight. Okay. No, baby. Cool. It's, it's By how eight. many women? Three. And this is the kicker. I want more. Mm-hmm. Now. By multiple women? What's the intention? I just want God to your bring them. I just want God to bring them. Oh, okay. And you have, so you just. Because you want God to bring them like in a stork or something? Bruh. Like we see on cartoons? What do you mean you want God to bring them? <sighs> okay. So I wanted to go flame <laughs> this dude. <laughs> For saying that what he doing and how he doing it got anything to do with God. Stop putting God in the middle of y'all mess. Bruh. This ain't got nothing to do with God, bruh. <laughs> but I don't know who his God is. I don't know if he talking about Jill. Jesus. <laughs> I don't know if he's talking about Yahweh, but he don't believe in Jill. And he might be, you know, more on the Muslim and Jewish side. Jesus was a, a prophet, but he wasn't really the savior. I don't know if you just completely don't believe in the Bible at all and you are Hindu. I don't know if he believe in Buddha. I don't know what he believe. I don't know if he believes in the universe because a lot of us believe in the universe. I don't know what his belief system is and all of that may make his opinions on certain things differ. But if you believe in the Bible, my brother, when you sitting up here talking about this here, this right here, this right here, you fornicating brother ain't got nothing to do with God. That's all you. <laughs> so don't be putting that on God. Don't do that. Don't disrespect Jesus like that. So you just because my that. point is this. <laughs> What's your point? My desire to get married mm-hmm. is lower than my fear of divorce. So as you would say it, Dr. Brian, you said it. I didn't say it. I will agree. I'm just taking my time. You're not taking your time. I'm I am. Sure You're being very action based. You're not taking your time. You're being very action based. I'm taking my time. You're being very action-based. You have eight kids yeah. with three different women. Yes. You are creating, procreating, and multiplying. That is not taking your time. You're being very selectively active. Mm. Okay? So you're creating, mm-hmm. and disclaimer, the kids are innocent. They are beautiful and amazing. Anything I say has nothing to do with the babies because I, I can't wait to be a mom, and I love, 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 love the ba- kids, period. Um, but you are proactively choosing where you want to be active at and where you want to take your time. Mm-hmm. You want to take your time in having a wife because of your own fears. But you will, and I say this with all respect and love, what I'm about to say next, okay, Cam? Hold on, let's not skip past that. Let that sink in. (laughs) Did y'all hear that? Do you need me to rewind it? Yeah, you're not taking your time, brother. You're really not. Like, taking your time doing what? And that's the part that be tripping me out. (laughs) When people be like, oh, I'm just taking my time. You're not practicing celibacy, so you're not taking your time? Because you basically participating in the one thing that is supposed to be sacred in a marriage, like the thing that you're, that makes you being a married couple, that bonds you according to the Bible. That's the thing that brings you together as one, as husband and wife. So you over here bonding with all these different people. How you figure you taking your time? You got eight kids with three different baby mamas? Come on now, dog. Bruh. Um, when she was talking about his damage. Like he's being selective. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's very, that's a very interesting point to put out there because I think a lot of people miss that. Like when they say, oh, I'm taking my time and she's saying you're being selective because you're not taking your time because you're doing all these things. You're having kids and things of that nature. The reason why you're putting a pause with marriage is because you have some type of blockage. There's something that you're afraid of or something some type of trauma or something like that that has happened to you that you haven't been able to come to grips with. And that's why you're afraid, basically, of making that level of commitment. I just thought that that was very interesting that she put that out there, because that's not something I think a lot of people necessarily speak on, per se. I think they talk around it, but not necessarily specifically to that. Well, the reason that he is scared of marriage is because he's a multimillionaire who's very successful, who is continuing to be successful, and he realizes that he's a target, and because of the world that we live in now, most of the women that are around him, he can't trust them. Well, and I mean, because of his fame, because it's not just that he has money, but he's also famous, so a lot of people know he got money. And in the world that we live in, yeah, you want to be scared because for him, unfortunately, he should have had somebody that he could trust locked down. Like he should have LeBron James styled that joker. Mm-hmm. He should have had somebody there already because mm-hmm. him getting there, not just being rich, but being rich and famous puts him in a position where most of the women he comes across, he can't trust. So it's not that it's just a fear. It's a legitimate fear. The bad part about it is he, like you said, is being selective and he's still doing the fornication. Mm -hmm. He's still out here having kids and damaging their lives. I heard somebody on the internet sitting up there talking about it was, not that it was okay, but saying that the fact that he has resources helps to compensate for the damage he's doing 
just because he got resources. And on the show that I saw it, the other people that was on there called him on his bull. I'm calling you on that too. That is ridiculous. That is ridiculous. Now, there was a truth to it mm -hmm. because having resources does make up for a lot of stuff, mm -hmm. but it doesn't cover the damage. No. It just means that you're good over here, but you're bad over here. Yeah. Instead of being bad in both places. Someone without resources, you're bad over there. You ain't got no resources. <laughs> you're bad over here. But hold on. Time out. I was just going to say, so with guys like this, because he grew up in a two-parent home because mm. his parents are still together. Mm. He said they've married, been married for 39 years. Yep. So my thing is for someone like him who is high value because he's high earning and people would consider him to be high value. Some may consider him to be high value. But when do we say to someone like him in his position, okay, well, make better choices, just like kind of we tell women to make better choices. He didn't just stumble into money. You understand what I'm saying? Like he he had a vision. He had a path for his life. He knew that he went to play pro ball. And you're not dumb to the idea that once you become a pro ball player and you attain all this wealth and this money and different things of that nature, that you're going to have women flocking all over you. If you know that you want to be a dad or you know that you want to eventually get married, then why are you not taking the necessary steps to make sure that that's something that can be done with as less risk as possible? So having the mentors or the coaches or your parents or whoever to be able to talk to you about like, these are the type of women that you should be surrounding yourself. These are the type of women that you should be looking for. Or heck, like they do a lot of times with pastors, before you can even get a church, you got to be married. You know what I'm saying? Like you want to go out and have this career and things of that nature. You need to try to figure something out now, lock somebody down now. So that way you can build with them and you can trust them, you know, before you become this big celebrity where it's going to be harder for you to be able to to try to find someone for you to be able to build with because you have these trust issues. For a guy in his position, mm -hmm. now so mind y'all, we talking about 1% of our population. So we going into a conversation that does not apply to the vast majority of men. All right, This part of the conversation doesn't apply to the vast majority of men. 99% of us are not in this conversation. So what I'm saying now about him does not apply to the rest of us, okay? <laughs> no, because people be acting like when we talk about these type of guys that it applies to the rest of us, it don't. Here's the thing. Part of the dream with making it to pro ball, of course, you want the person to love playing ball. So they love, they're doing what they love. It's a right. dream. Number one, I'm probably broke a lot of times mm -hmm. or maybe middle class and struggling, you know, check paycheck to paycheck. So I want to get the finances to no longer be in that type of situation. Okay. So you got those two. Part three for men is, oh my gosh, so many women are going to want to be with me. That's a part of their dream. You're talking about people who are playing a sport. We're talking about entertainment. They're not in this to have healthy relationships. They're in this to live this celebrity lifestyle that has been paraded in front of them. And this is what they want. So you first have to break down that machine, which is going to be very difficult because it brings in a lot of money. And anything in this country that brings in a lot of money, you're really not going to be able to rail against it until Jesus come and knocks it all down. It's going to be plenty of us out here saying, you know, that's wrong. You shouldn't be doing that. No. It's going to be plenty of us out here doing it. It's going to be plenty of Christians out here. It's going to be plenty of Jewish people out here. It's going to be plenty of Muslim out here saying, y'all all doing this is all messed up and all of that other stuff. But to the guy like that who actually is getting into that system, willingly fighting to get into that system, they ain't trying to hear us most of the time. There is a small percentage of people in the system who are probably Christians, real Christians, not people who claim. But a lot of them just sort of give in fully to the lifestyle. He wasn't even looking to get married. Like there's a part of it that's him afraid of getting his stuff taken. Mm -hmm. But a part of the reason he's afraid of getting his stuff taken is because he don't really want it in the first place. He just want the walls. So yeah, he dead wrong. But it's, how do you tell somebody who doesn't even want to be right? You should do this to be right. He don't care. And it sucks. And he off. But I hear what you're saying. Mm -hmm. And I do agree mm -hmm. with that. However, I was going to say, I feel like there needs to be a conversation about that aspect of it. Like, just like how we were holding women accountable and saying that they need to make better choices. No, no, no. You still hold them accountable. I mean, yeah, I, not necessarily this. It doesn't have to be this status of 
high value mm. as far as monetary. Mm. I mean, it doesn't have to be like a millionaire to stand a third. Mm. It could be someone who's making six figures, whether mm. it's high or low or mid or whatever, six figures and things right. of that nature. It's like we're saying that women need to do the work and they need to understand that they have a certain clock. You can't wait until you've established yourself until you've reached this level in corporate America or whatever to get your bag and then be like, okay, now I want to find my husband. Like they need to be realistic about the expectations and things of that nature. They need to be thinking like, okay, like if you want a dude of X, Y, Z caliber, you need to be trying to lock him down like in your mid to late twenties. Because I do believe that there are a lot of guys who make six figures and up or what have you that do want marriage who may be having issue finding Women. So then we need to speak specifically to that because that ain't Cam. Okay. Even if he said in this interview, because I didn't watch it, mm-hmm. even if he said in this interview, yeah, I want to be married someday. If you move in a certain way that makes it very obvious to me that you don't want to be married, you don't want to be married. I don't really care what you say. Okay. Well, so for guys so like so, that, let, so make it so make it for a guy who wants to get married because mm-hmm. this is the channel for married people. By married people. And for people who want to be, be married. married. Okay, so for, for those guys who actually want that, that's something that they need to kind of keep in the back of their mind as well while they're chasing their bag and they're trying to secure, you know, a certain amount of financial stability that if you know that you're looking to be married and you know it's going to be harder the more money that you make to find women that you can trust, then you need to put in some kind of ground level work before you kind of reach that. With, I would say because we've said this before, Mm -hmm. it's better for people to get married earlier when you're talking about establishing relationships like that. Mm -hmm. We do not, however, have a culture that supports that way of looking at it. Well, that's part of the problem. And that is the big problem. Our culture does not support the mindset necessary for young people to be able to go through the trials and the drama that they have to go through together Mm -hmm. to build the type of relationship that they would want to build so that when they do make it, they have trust. Men look at you different if you were day one. So you generally don't have that in our culture looked at in the way it needs to be. Mm -hmm. for us to really have that. If they go into that situation, for the most part, we're so selfish that it never works. And then, of course, you also have, you know, some people are so damaged and they Mm -hmm. have to work on themselves because they came from damaged homes. So you got people who are selfish Mm -hmm. you got the damaged people. You got all of this drama and all it because of the culture has completely destroyed us because we're so bad off. It's hard to say that. But the reality is that would be the best metric. If I were to talk to anybody and they're, you know, really working on something, get somebody young that you can trust while you ain't got nothing so that when you get older, you know, she there for you and not for your money. Right. That's the easiest way to go through it. Other than that, you got to start employing so many different methods to try to find somebody that you trust. Yeah. So that's the easiest way. Cam, but you will selfishly create broken families, even if you're in their life and okay. you're a proactive father. And I believe you're an amazing daddy. I can only imagine with just your presence and, and knowing you thus far. But these families are still broken. Every child cannot have Papa in the house with them. So some child, if not all, all, will end up with some kind of deficit without daddy being there. Mm -hmm. Now, you chose to do that. I'm not saying you sat there and woke up one morning and said, I want to be selfish today, so I'm going to go make a baby. Not saying that at all. But those are selfish acts at the expense of your fear. So at what point do you feel the fear? Do it anyways. And yeah, that is a low-functioning behavior. To say that I am going to create these homes. Oh, let me go better. I'm going to build these houses and put kids and these beautiful women and kids in them, but I ain't going to create a home in them. I'm going to wait till I dissipate my fear to find a wife where I'm still going to be fearful with because there's no such thing as not having some type of nerve or some type of feeling behind marrying somebody who you're spending your life with. And then I'm going to build a home with her while all these other beautiful babies have houses. That's completely unfair and it's selfish. Just tell me when I can talk. Yeah, almost. That's completely unfair and that's selfish. And so, yes, you're taking your time in this department, but you're not taking your time in this department, which means you're compartmentalizing. And compartmentalizing never works. Compartmentalizing hurts everybody involved. Everybody who's in this box and that box and this box and that box and this box. And then here you go over here trying to figure out what box you're going to feed or entertain or do. Then you're looking outside to figure out who is your next victim to put in the box. It's unhealthy. Bruh. Whoa. Whoa. Dag, yeah. <laughs> she just chopped him up a little bit. But l- let's see what his rebuttal is. Anyway, if you've made it this far, go ahead and smash that subscribe button. Make sure you turn on your post notifications so that way YouTube knows that you appreciate what we're putting down. What we're putting down. All right. And it's, it's a huge dysfunction within our black community that I truly believe personally, statistically, mental health wise, and community wise, that black men would stop. Black men would what? 
stop, stop doing that, that they would stop that dysfunctional behavior of compartmentalizing and creating houses, not homes, mm -hmm. and then finally a home with the wife. And then you have all these other houses that are homeless, but you over here at some point when you do get a wife, if you do, I'm saying if that's what you want, you will, you'll get whatever you want. You're trying to create a home. Totally dysfunctional and extremely, that's the epitome of selfish, epitome of selfish. I'm done, you can go for okay, it. Okay, say so All right, so uh, what identifies as a broken home? Um, what you have going on with these, whoever you're not in the house with is a broken home. It's called a blended family. It's called that, a blended family. That means? That the family is blended. So blended. So means, blended means broken. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the guy that you were entertaining, mm -hmm. you would go as low as 26. That I would entertain? Yes. Okay. okay. And as high as what age? Whatever man that doesn't have kids. As high as... Whoever doesn't have kids. Whatever age he is with no kids. I just... I just that's no, that's how, the age. I'm saying I don't have an age range as far as how old if he has no kids. So your non-negotiable is a person who does not have children. My non-negotiable is a person with kids. But yes, I, I get what you're, how you're saying it. Yes. So you cannot date a person. You cannot be with a I person. I can, but I'm choosing not to. So... I can be you know, with like, anyone, but like I'm choosing you're, not you're, to. You're, 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 I got it correct. It is my narrative, Cam. You're I like can, jumping in, I jumping out. It's either... Cam. No, no, it's not I can't. There's no such thing. I can date whoever I want. I am definitely well equipped to do so. Okay. So I'm not going to allow that word to be something that fits what I can't do. I'm well equipped to date anybody. Yes. My preference, yes. because there's nothing wrong with a lot of men who have kids, so I don't want to put that narrative out there. Yes. My personal preference is I will not choose to date a man with kids. Okay. Yes. So you're dating a man with kids. Just a scenario. Oh, okay, got it. Yes. Your date. His his rebuttal to that so far from what I saw was to deflect yeah. and start talking about her. Yeah. Maybe he'll come back to the point. I, I just don't feel like we have forever to sit here and have him get to it. I really want to hear what he has to say. Oh, though. God. Yes. You're dating a man with kids. Yes. So you've identified that that's a broken home from the jump with your verbiage of blended family means broken. I've identified that I'm dating a broken man who is creating who he is. Because we could teach what we know, we create who we are. And so broken people create brokenness, whether it's through a child, whether it's through a relationship, whether it's through themselves. It doesn't have to be a beautiful baby, but you're creating brokenness. And broken people can come from married households. I'm not saying that a two-parent household can't create the result of a child who then has brokenness and creates broken blended families everywhere. That's I'm not, not my, negating that's not, that. That's not my point. No, I know I'm making that point. I'm, I'm, but yes. But my point. My, my answer is I not only identify that those homes are houses without a home because he's not in them, yeah. but also that he's a broken man. But you're going to be with a broken man. No, I won't. I just said I wouldn't be with a man. I wouldn't be with a broken man who has multiple kids. I will no, take no, no, a... No, 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 not multiple. I'm well, talking... a kid, a kid. It doesn't so matter. So you're I not know. going to date a man with children. No, but let me clear this up because you said I won't date a broken man. That's not what I said. No, we... I said, are you... Listen to what I'm saying. I heard saying, you. Though. Let me answer it. Hold on. We all have a level of brokenness. So will I date a broken man? Yes. Am I going to date a certain type of brokenness? No. Of course you're not. And that type of brokenness is a man who has kids outside of me isn't something that's conducive for what I want forever. But will you date him? No. So that goes to my point. I'm trying to ask a mm -hmm. question. You have two different men right here. Mm -hmm. One man who has- I will not date a man with kids. Okay, that's all I'm asking. Yes, I will But not. do you understand, just off of the statistics, mm -hmm. Here we go. Go ahead and be a statistic and say it, because I hear it all the time. And it, what? Say it. You say what you're saying, and I'm going to either... Based agree. on statistics, most men have kids. Go for it. At your age. But that's why I said early on, Cam, when you said young and remember the patience of me being older woman, I said, well, for, you know, a woman who has certain qualifications or criterions, like no kids, yeah. that would be... I have to have enough brain cells to know, baby, that's the payoff. Okay, he may be younger, successful, no kids, but mm -hmm. now you have to make sure you implement the patience. Or you get you an older man who has kids, and he could have been married with his kids. There's a lot of different scenarios why men have kids, okay? Mm -hmm. But then you don't have to have as much patience with him as maturity-wise. But do you want to have to have patience to say, and it's not even dealing with, because that's not bad. You want to have enough patience to gut the fact that you are dating a man with young kids or grown kids, and that's against what you want your value system. For me, i rather choose the poison of, I'll have patience with you, baby. We just have to figure this out, and I'm cool with that, and we'll have a good time in the meantime. Then I know that you have kids. It's against something I, I never wanted as a child. And now if you have young kids, I'm going to be very involved because I'm a loving woman. I'm never going to take But you're giving a scenario that you're saying. Yeah, that wouldn't not, do. But yeah. Right, and those are the reasons why I wouldn't do them. For sure. Because I'm going to be involved, right? I'm never going to be a woman who's not. But I must defend this situation. Mm -hmm. I have eight children. 
And Eight beautiful babies. I'm I sure. will not. No baby mother of mine could ever say that she's a single mother because single mother insinuates that she has no help. So for me in my situation, mm -hmm. life be life. -in. That's a common. Yeah, it does. I agree. And my situation is a product of life, life. happening. Mm -hmm. So and none of us are exempt from it. Of course. <laughs> right, so right. we have preferences. 100%. We have things that we could say, OK, I would love to do this. Right. I'm raised in a church. So my father would always direct us to say, hey, be this, be that, be that, be this. Right. But I can also tell my father this, your reality mm -hmm. is not my reality. 100%. You walking into 7-Eleven is different than your son walking into 7-Eleven. Sorry. Makes sense to you. So I can't agree with you, and we can agree to disagree, mm -hmm. that I'm not creating broken homes. I'm doing the best with the situation that I was given and am given. Mm -hmm. So... Hands on father? Absolutely. I don't ascribe to just bringing fatherless children or motherless children into this world. I have an unbelievable relationship with the mothers of my children. Mm -hmm. And it's healthy co-parenting that we show the children real love, real communication, right. real orders of operations. And I think that's key because even though we have this unspoken societal pressure to do this and be this, but that's just not, that's a unicorn that you're waiting for. Because if I'm sitting up here telling you like, yo, I have aspirations to have this, mm -hmm. but my experiences have shown me that that person really doesn't exist. So when I'm asking or I'm asked questions of, is the expectations unrealistic? Right. Because my reality has garnered unbelievable connections with women around the world. Mm -hmm. Not in Africa, I haven't been in Africa, <laughs> right? But at the same time, I've been able to make the best of my situation. and. I can't say that that situation ever resulted into a broken home. Got it. So this is my thing. That was a real fancy way of him basically not trying to accept responsibility that, yes, you are creating broken homes. A single mom or a single dad doesn't necessarily mean that the person does not have anybody. It means that you're not married to the person. So it is a single mother or a single dad. In this case, we're talking about him and his uh, baby mamas. So you created single moms because you're not with any one of the three of your baby mamas. Like, I don't understand, like, how how we try to overlook, bend the truth, redefine things. We like to come up with new ways to try to explain things and stuff like that. Like, single and married is pretty cut and dry. Yep. Like, you, you're either with the person or you're not. Like, it's either one or the other. It's really not that difficult. Is really not. Now, whether or not you're an active participant in your child's life, okay, that's a different story. But you can't say, oh, well, I'm not cr creating sing single mom. Yeah, you are. And yes, yeah, it's a broken home because it doesn't have both mommy and daddy in the home together. It's hard to tell people who have been highly successful. It's hard to talk with them about certain things. In general, it's just the way that we as humans act. And it's something that all of us would have to deal with if we have his level of success. It's hard to be in a situation. Y'all know Kanye. Y'all see Kanye do it all the time. Yes. Don't nobody tell him nothing. Uh-uh, you can't tell me nothing. Because he Kanye, right? Mm -hmm. He's in this very similar situation. Nobody don't tell him nothing because he can. And if they keep people around them that can hold them accountable, it's usually a miracle. It's not usually the norm. It's just messy. messy. You don't even want to accept the fact that you made three single mothers. You don't even want to accept that fact. I don't think they're single mothers. Bro, you ain't marry none of them. They're single mothers. That's it. There's nothing Show else enough. to it. This is what happens when your emotions lead and then your logic follows to try to make sense of what you emotionally want to feel. Mm -hmm. It has nothing to do with you logically thinking through something and seeing if it actually makes sense. No, you don't want anybody to say anything bad about your families because there is care there for both the women and for the children. But the problem is it's an emotional care. And because we don't understand what love is, they got great verses in the Bible about love. You go in there and y'all read that. See how many of the things they list says how you feel. And it's about emotions. Most of them is not about that. It's about how you act. We are so twisted, but it makes sense because he's rich. He's famous. Mm -hmm. He grew up in our culture mm -hmm. and he's in the sports and I already told y'all sports and entertainment. Those two industries is very different from 
every other lifestyle. And now you're seeing it because something as simple as is she single or is she married? He can't even get past that. It's a broken home because it's not mom, dad, married, children. That is a non-broken home. Anything other than that is considered a broken home, regardless of how you got there. And that's the thing that sucks. It could be that you went, you got married, and then y'all got divorced. Or Ooh, even, even worse. It's not better. But even to have even less accountability on the person that's there. What if your spouse passed away? They got mm-hmm. sick and they passed away or they were in war and they passed away or something like that. This has zero fault on you. It's one of the few times you can end up in a situation and you have zero fault in it. If you go and you end up with somebody else or you stay there by yourself, it is still a broken home. It's not a hard concept, mm-hmm. but we're so emotional about the wording. And this is why words do matter. <laughs> a lot of people say words don't matter. They do. The power of life and death is in the tongue. Creation was created by the speaking of words. And whether you believe in the Bible or not, there's an understanding in the Bible of how powerful words is. The Bible is, you know what? I want to look up exactly how old it is because it's not 2000 years old. It's older than 2000 years. And those stories, those descriptions of events, those descriptions by witnesses of things that they saw happening still impact the world today severely. Mm -hmm. It's just a book of words. Words matter. Yeah. And we can't just change them because we feel like it. Mm-hmm. I'm done because the video is long. I don't want to go no because I could just rattle off about the crap <laughs> he just said. It was. Bull- so yeah. I, I don't even really have to go no further into it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. You get mm. you get to you get to hold that L. Dr. Brandt, she she gave you that L and you got to hold it. And yeah. You got to cradle that L. <laughs> hold it close to your face and love it like your baby, bro. <laughs> Yeah, because you wild out. Yeah. All right, guys. Um, I need you to do me a favor. I need you to hit that like button. Mm-hmm. I need you to hit that subscribe button. Mm-hmm. And I need you to hit that notification button. Mm-hmm. Go inside of your settings inside of the YouTube app, apparently, and then go to the notifications part for subscriptions. And they turn it off, even though you press notifications, which means that you want to get notifications. They said, no, we should turn the notification that you turned on YouTube. We should turn it off. I don't know why. Hit all the buttons for me. Yes. Thank you. All right, y'all. That was it. It was a long one. All right. Peace. Peace. Hey, everybody. Down in the description, there are two links. One is to a GoFundMe, and the other one is to a video that explains what the GoFundMe is for. Mm -hmm. Long story short, we have a medical situation with our daughter that we have to pay for everything out of pocket, and we can really use you guys' help. If you have the time, uh, we'd love for you to go check it out. If you have the money, the funds, we'd love for you guys to help. If not, maybe you could send a link to somebody else who can't help. Uh, We thank you for your time. Thank you. Press the alpha button. <laughs>